So hi, my name is, uh, is Dr. Christine Dollahan, um, and I had a rebirth experience. So the, the earliest memory I have is, is walking through this um, spiritual dimension. I can't explain it in any other way. It was sort of concrete, but it wasn't. So there was, um, there was a lot of energy, a lot of color, and a lot of almost like clouds around me. Um, the color was sort of bright, um, like pink and 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 very warm colors, like pink, white, um, and I and it was very warm and it was very beautiful there. It was just so beautiful. I mean, I had not a care in the world. It was, I felt at ease, um, and I, I remember seeing sort of buildings is what I could describe them in human terms in the background. Um, and what I perceived um, was that those buildings were training buildings. Those were buildings that souls were kind of training and getting ready for their lifetime on planet Earth. And so they were making their, their plans for their lifetimes. They were, you know, studying spiritual topics and they were getting ready. So it was almost like a, like a, yeah, like a boot camp or like a camp. And I had come from that and I was, what I can only describe as um, like walking down a path, but it wasn't a path in human terms, okay? It was more like, you know, less concrete. Um, and I was communicating with somebody next to me who was a spiritual mentor. That's how I can describe him. He was like a very highly evolved spiritual being right next to me. And he was floating next to me or walking next to me. He was sort of tall, uh, I remember him sort of having like darker robes on, um, but very loving being, very loving being, but not a being that, that incarnates on planet Earth anymore. Um, it was more of a being that had kind of evolved and was now helping beings like me, you know, get through their karma, get through their life stuff, get through everything. And so we were, we were walking and the way we were communicating was um via our minds so we were telepathically communicating and at the same time that he was communicating with me i was really communicating with you know higher consciousness god or whatever else and i was getting spiritual downloads and spiritual um sort of truths about who we truly are in our nature at the same time and so at some point i remember kind of getting this feeling of like oh no now we're getting close um now now it's it's almost time for me to go and i was getting very anxious um and when i say i it wasn't me as a person it was more like my essence i, I felt i perceived myself as like a um, a ball of energy uh, almost like a lightful being that's also how i was kind of saw myself was just this this like lightful cloak around me um and so we were we were walking, getting very anxious, and I started bargaining with him, and that's how he pre he presented himself um, as a, as a male. But there was a, sort of this this also this understanding that you know that was just his preference to me. He could be male or female or anything really. Um, I just perceived him as male, and um, and he and I, I I kind of I was kind of asking him in my mind. I said, Do I really have to go? And I had this sort of dread of like, oh man, I've been through this so many times and I know what it's like down there and I know how hard it is down there and I really don't want to leave this beautiful, just blissful space. Like, I just wanted to stay here because it's very restful and very beautiful and up there. I mean, you don't have a care in the world there. And um, and he was like, well, we discussed this many times now. You, you need to go another time. And I said, well, can this at least be my last time? Like, do I really need to go another time? And he was like, well, it's really up to you. I mean, you know, if, if you do everything that you've, uh, that you've, you know, decided to accomplish on planet Earth, then, you know, maybe this, you know, he was like, it's probably not gonna be your last, last time, but it, you know, you could potentially skip over a couple of lifetimes and and take a shortcut and i remember in my essence and in my soul thinking at that time like that's what i want to do i i just want to power through this lifetime because i don't want to have to go back there again and before we knew it we were at this what i can only describe as almost like a helicopter hub so it was round and it was like a vortex and it was swirling in the middle um and and i was standing in the edge of it and I could see and perceive other souls standing with their mentors there as well, who had brought them there too. And it was very clear to me that 
those souls were born too. I mean, at that time, I didn't have that concept of I'm being born, but it was sort of cl clear to me that those souls were departing um, too, and that they had gone there to say goodbye to the spiritual realm. And so I was, I was standing there with him, and I, again, I was still bargaining, and I was like, you know, I really. I really don't want to have to go. Can we do anything? Like, can I just stay a couple more minutes or what? You know, minute that there was no time, but like, you know, it kind of felt that way. And he said, "Well, you know, we already discussed." And he started getting a little bit like lovingly, but a little bit, you know, like a a father figure, almost like we discussed it. Come on, we know we know you need to go. And then the last thing before he actually pushed me into the vortex because he knew I w I wouldn't have gone otherwise, was just remember that we're always here for you. All you need to do is reach out with your mind to us and remember that we're always here for you. And I said, okay. <laughs> so he pushed me and I thought in that moment ah, that, you know, he pushed me down again, he pushed me and I fell down the vortex. And so it was like the tunnel, but in reverse. So the tunnel that a lot of people see in their near, near death experiences is what I fell through, but in reverse, almost like a two way street. And I remember falling through the tunnel and it was a sensation of being sucked into darkness and and thinking like, ah, oh, you know, I remember this from the, t the times I was I was dying before. And and then uh, I, I there was this point where suddenly I was sucked into this dimension and I slammed into my body. I remember literally like slamming into my body, taking a breath oh, and then just thinking, oh, here we go again and being just completely exhausted. Landing in my body was awful. It was just like this really like harsh, like rough, you know, I mean, I was like literally slammed. It was like I was slammed into a wall. There was a lot of pain. It was cold. It was bright. And it was just, the thought was just, here I go again. And, and then after that, I kind of fell into just this like, like not amnesia, but like, you know, just, uh, I was uh, unconscious. I mean, I was passed out. And my mom will tell you that uh, on, the, on the other side, I was actually two weeks late. So I was so late that the doctors were really concerned that I might not be making it, that I might actually be a stillbirth, which I think is why my, my on the spiritual side, I was pushed, right? Because otherwise I probably wouldn't have made it into this body in this lifetime. I have a couple of more memories after that um i have one memory that must have been maybe a couple of days after my birth <clears throat> where i was still very clear um like kind of like now you know my consciousness was still very clear and i remember people like looking over my little bassinet and going like gucci gucci go oh she's so cute and i remember all their faces and thinking why are you talking to me in this baby language i'm like in here and i can hear you well and clear and you don't have to talk to me like this because, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, in sound mind, you can talk to me normally. And, uh, and, then, and then after that, I kind of fell into just this, this amnesia. I had little moments uh, in my early, like maybe first year, second year of my life where I had little flashes of memories of past lifetimes, um, a specifically a lifetime I had right before this one where I was um, a small girl and uh, and I had two parents who very much loved me, and I and I think they lost me when I was when I was a kid, when I was a child, because I remember that they grieved me a lot, and I remember as a soul kind of lifting out of my body and thinking, oh man, I'm really leaving them grieving. Um, and and the way I remember that was because my mom would come up to me and say, your name's Christine, your name's Christine, and I would think. I really don't like this name. I liked my name in the last lifetime much better because it was Lisa or something like that. And and I was like, I like that one much better. And somehow I liked my mommy and, uh, and daddy better there too because they were more loving. <laughs> and um, and and that was kind of like, it was almost like my, my spirit floating into this kind of body lifetime reality and and realizing, you know, like that now I had this new name and this new identity and kind of coming to terms with that. And I have to tell you that ever since I did, and ever since I accepted this experience to have been completely true and real, um, and ever since I started going down the path that I was always called to do, you know, regardless of what people say, I mean, my family members are very much against what I'm doing and think it's all out there and whatnot, but I'm just, I'm just walking my path. I'm just doing what I need to do. And ever since 
I am, I, I don't experience depression anymore. I, I feel, I feel very, I, I live a very fulfilled and very joyful and very happy life. I mean, I, you know, don't get me wrong. My father passed away. I still grieve. You know, I, um, you know, my husband and I are trying to make life work. You know, it's, it's still, it's still, life is still going on. But, but the. Uh, the darkness that I was in, that's that's past, that's gone. And I think that when people are experiencing those hard moments, that, that's absolutely a, a call for awakening and a call for really looking into what the soul is meant to do. Because what I what I also really truly believe is, is that everybody's purpose is unique, like a fingerprint. There's not one person that will have exactly the same purpose as you. And you finding it is gonna kind of link you up with the divine spark of God, and and it's so needed in the world right now. I mean, I'm living evidence because I was walking, floating down this path to my the spot where I was pushed into this lifetime, and and my mentor was saying to me, you know, we're we talked about this. We talked about why you need to come back to planet Earth. We know you don't really want to come because you know how hard it is down there. But we talked about the fact that you have certain things to do on this planet, that you have specific things to do to work through lessons to learn. We have a contract here. We have a plan here. Uh, n n nothing is coincidence. Uh, I, I, I know that for sure. We all intuitively know when we're going to leave this planet. Um, and I believe that we also have a free choice of, of when or not whether or not we want to leave it. I think that we we've planned our lifetimes, and we you know we say we want to go to this age or that age. But I also think that we can um, extend it or or short, shorten it. You know, I um, I do believe that, and I and this is not just a you know an opinion. Actually, I being intuitive and still being in contact with my with my mentor. Um, you know, I've gotten my number for when I'm going to exit. And there was this this idea of like, well, you know, you have a five five year leeway. I mean, if you want to stay five years longer, you can. And, you know, having had this experience, I'm kind of like, nah, I'm good. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll exit when I'm when I'm when you you say it's OK to exit. Um, you know, obviously we have free choice. Otherwise, people wouldn't, you know, have the choice to to end their life early. This pre pre birth experience is. I think it's not a coincidence that I was meant to remember this. I think it was meant to, to for me to share this. But I also believe that it definitely pushed me into what I'm meant to be doing here on planet Earth, which is explaining people. You know exactly that because when you when you understand why you're here and there's this purpose, and I think that this purpose is behind every every soul has that same purpose. There's no no better or worse purpose. Um, but I think we're all meant to to understand and to awaken to that fact and then collectively raise the vibrations. If I have a chance to give people out there a message, I would say that the sole purpose for being on this planet is to remember who we truly are, which is unconditional love. That's my message. I think that unconditional love is 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 where it's at and and remembering that we all come from this place and we all go back to this place and to not take things so seriously because they really aren't and uh and to laugh more often about things you know even when they they seem hard to just say huh you know look at this this is happening now it's happening for a reason and it's for me to remember where i where i truly came from and who i truly am which is love i thank you all for uh listening to my my experience with an open mind and an open heart and hopefully it is helpful to you all and if you want to reach me i i'm dr christine dollahan you can uh reach me via my social media uh, platforms uh, on instagram i'm at it's dr christine i also am on youtube at it's dr christine and uh as well as on facebook um it's dr christine so that's how you can reach out to me and uh, thank you so much for letting me share.